Welcome. Today we're talking about better than spinal fusion. What are four minimally invasive options for relief and improved function? If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum. And today we're talking about spinal stenosis and what could we do better? For those patients who haven't heard about other treatment options, we feel like it's a disservice for you not to understand there may be something that might be a fit for you. So today we're going to talk about that potential fit. So what we're going to talk about is spinal stenosis is a common problem, but it's rarely treated efficiently. And we're going to give you options for understanding how those options might actually be a better fit for you. Right. When we talk about stenosis, what we really kind of see is the following is we know stenosis is a narrowing of the spinal canal. It results in having this pain that's present in the back and the legs. And it's more than 200,000 people in America. And actually it's growing and increasing in size as we have the baby boomers starting to be able to kind of hit their peak numbers. A healthy spine consists of disc and nerves and those ligamentum flavum, which is normal in size. But when we start seeing that areas that are worsened, we see a narrow spinal canal that you can see here in red. And what causes that narrow canal can be a number of different things. It can be a bulging disc, which we frequently suspect. We can see bony overgrowth like arthritis, but the thing that seems to be most prevalent is a thickened ligament, specifically ligamentum flavum. And that area is what causes so many problems and issues and really is problematic for a number of patients because what they don't know is that historically, the way that's treated is by doing a laminectomy or a laminotomy where you have this resection that takes place that is huge and surgical and is a pretty big, significant response. So what we want to be able to talk about is how is this normally recognized and how is this recognized by the layperson? Traditionally, it's back pain and leg pain is worse when you stand or when you walk. It's better when you sit. And sometimes it's better when you bend or lean forward. Historically, as we've kind of classified this shopping cart sign. So the same way as if you had a shopping cart and you leaned over it and you, your pain felt better. If you're washing dishes, or if you're cooking and you need to lean over the stove or lean over the sink and your pain feels better, that's classic spinal stenosis. We can see that it can cause pain that goes down the leg using fancy language in terms of like, how would we describe this in traditional medical terms is something that's called neurogenic claudication. And we know that the way it is normally treated is by having someone go to physical therapy and then do epidural steroid injection. And then after that, they'll do another epidural or another epidural. And then after that, then they go to surgery. And what we would propose is in between that surgery and epidural, there are better options than us just doing that alone. So how can we be able to talk about traditional surgery? And I know this is a little bit gruesome, so pardon me. That bottom right hand picture shows that there's the area of this open surgery that's in place where we've resected the bone, the roof of the area that's being squeezed. That's the aspect of a traditional laminectomy. The reason why we look at laminectomy as being problematic or fusions being problematic because it can cause other problems after having the surgery because we've made this major incision, we've made this major resection, and you can have adjacent segment disease from fusions, and you can have a non-healing area that doesn't always give us the response of what we want from sometimes from laminectomies. So we go back to this canal stenosis. There's four different areas that can cause a reason for us to have the stenosis. One is an increase in ligament size. One is that arthritis, which is rather two is arthritis or osteophyte formation. Three is a disc bulge into canal. And four is vertebral body shifting or something that's called in fancy terminology, a spondylolisthesis. At the end of the day, you may not just have one of these things. It's a possibility that you have multiple different ones. And historically, we talk about doing a fusion or a laminectomy. We're trying to see if we can be able to make everything as better as much as we can. But what if we can make things better and we don't cause problems? And that's the reason for us talking about how can we be able to do this by doing a minimally invasive approach. So you look at stenosis, there's different types of stenosis. There's a central stenosis, and then there's the aspect of a lateral stenosis, and there's foraminal stenosis. And so what does that mean? It means in squeezes that are in the center, squeeze a, little, squeeze a little bit further out, squeezes that are further out than that. And how you be able to treat that, we can use different techniques to do so. 
about 53% are a mixture of both central and lateral, but the rest of that is it's right in the center, traditionally caused by that ligament and flavum. So one way to be able to deal with that ligament is to do something that's called a mild procedure. It's a minimally invasive lumbar decompression. In essence, what that means is we're taking that ligament and we're shaving it. And we're shaving it by using a small incision that's incredibly small, maybe the size and center of what looks like the context of a baby aspirin. So 5.1 millimeters in size. And we take all our tools through that as opposed to a major incision. So these are the tools. That's what it looks like. What we're able to do is to be able to take a portion of the bone and a portion of that ligament and make that area better without us having to make a big removal of the roof. In, area, in essence, we take the area that has caused the squeeze as opposed to everything else that's including it. And so when we look at this, we know that there's a number of papers that give us value and give us a response for why this is useful. They've been able to take a look at more than 145 patients over six sites. And in essence, what they were looking at was those patients who received epidurals, one or two or more. And what they found is by doing more than one epidural wasn't beneficial, that over two years, it was 86% more cost effective to do this type of treatment than epidural steroid injections repetitively, or repetitively, and that giving more than one epidural delivery delays patients being able to get better. They compared this head to head. The left column in, in green is the areas of traditional surgery, which is a trial that's called the sport trial. And then on the right hand side, side are multiple trials in blue that have compared this type of treatment, which is a that mild procedure, which is an acronym that again stands for minimally invasive lumbar decompression. What we see is that there's less dural tears, meaning we are into the CSF causing problems. There's less blood transfusions where there's 14% in traditional surgery, 0% in this type of procedure. Intraoperatively, it's 9% of problems or 12% postoperatively for surgery. And for our respective mild, it's 0%, which is phenomenal. Where is this appropriate fit for patients? On the left-hand side are those patients who just say, you know what, I really don't want a major surgery right now. And if we were to do this treatment, it does not preclude patients from being able to go to a fusion later if they had to, but it allows for us to be able to do something that's minimally invasive, doesn't cause a problem, and can make you potentially better. Why wouldn't we do it? And on the opposite side of that surgical candidate are those patients who are sick who have heart problems, lung problems, kidney problems, who going through surgery is a major risk. And to do that, it just doesn't really make sense. We talk about comparing it head to head. We can see general anesthesia for the aspect of a laminectomy infusion, outpatient going home the same day for a mile. Incision three to five, on the other side, minimal and may not even require a stitch. Days in the hospital for a laminectomy or fusion, three to five, for us, less than one, if at all, of ever having to go into the hospital. Complication rate of 23% with the aspect of traditional surgery, less than 0.1% with the aspect of mild. The responders are equivalent of 80% at least, and our cost is one fifth that of what traditional surgery happens to be. The other treatment options that are out there is for us to be able to go after that area of the arthritis, that bone that's present or the disc bulge. And how can we do that? We do it with an endoscopic methodology, meaning we're using a scope to get down into that area in that region to be able to resect the tissue without causing a major incision through the muscle that results in us being able to say, how can we leverage this without going through even a micro discectomy or an open discectomy? We can do this better. We can do this more efficiently and we can do this safer so that we use the methodology of going into that area where the problem is targeting the area where that disc contacts that nerve and saying, let's get this area and make it better. Let's make it closer to normal. And how do we do that? We use a small tube that we use a camera to go down into that area in that region. We're able to resect it, resect the areas that are important and basically see the nerve, see the bone, see the areas of the tissue, see the disc and take out the areas that are causing the squeeze in order for us to get a result that we feel is appropriate and a better fit. Comparing it from a safe standpoint, we can see that traditional surgery is going to have those bulges come back anywhere from 30% to as little as 10%. For us, we're under 5% with the endoscopic treatment. We have those dural tears and infection anywhere ranging from 15% to maybe as much as 5%. For us, we're less than 1%. And those things matter. Who wouldn't want to have a safer procedure that gives us a similar outcome that allows for us to be able to get back to being able to do the things that we want to be able to do without us having problems and issues? Almost anybody's going to make that assumption of saying, you know what, I would always want to do that. So the last category is that aspect of vertebral body shifting, where you have that shift that takes place. And this is important. 
The type and size of shift matters. If you have a significant shift, you're gonna need to structurally impact that by doing traditional surgery. But not every shift requires for you to have open surgery in order to be able to get a response. One of some of the things that we can do to try to improve that, we can use a vertiflex as a treatment option, which is the spacer that we place in between the spinous processes that can open it, make that area that's the squeeze both foraminally as well as centrally better. We can be able to use it so that it's placed in between those areas that we can see both from an AP image as well as a lateral image that then results in kind of that normative response that makes those areas that are most common and responsive. These are the tools that we utilize in order to be able to use it through a small hole to make those areas responsive to our being able to introduce that area that opens up by a spacer that's placed into those regions between the spinous processes. How does this work out? At the end of the day, when we kind of look through this, we can see improvements in back pain, leg pain, reduction of medication that we're dependent upon, and patients being satisfied. We compare that this is not a drop that says, okay, well, we made a drop in the bucket and it got better for a short period of time, like an injection. That's not what we're doing. Instead, what we're saying is how can we be able to make this be a lasting event? How can we make this last greater than three, four, five years? And what we see is improvements in back pain that last five years, improvement in leg pain that improves and lasts for five years, improvement in medication use that constantly gets better, improvements in patient satisfaction that stays the same after five years. Those things are important. And finally, we talk about spinal simplicity as a potential treatment option. It's an area that is like that old school vice that you would have in shop that is able to come in there, used in a non-invasive way that doesn't require a major incision and basically drilling into the actual bone, but instead is able to fuse the bone by bringing that area that squeezes it together and gives us a response of what it is that we need. It can be useful for stenosis, for spinal listesis, and degenerative disc disease in order to be able to improve pain and improve outcomes. At the end of the day, it's useful for spinal stenosis, degenerative disc disease, spinal listesis, and other problems. And we've seen studies that have shown that have eventually been able to be able to improve that 92% of patients have been able to get the response of what it is that we need. In essence, we have four different treatment options in order to be able to give alternatives to traditional surgery as a potential option instead of fusion depending on the candidacy and if that stenosis is the major cause. So we can be able to treat this with things like mild to minimally invasive lunar de decompression. We can treat it with endoscopic discectomy. We're able to resect those areas. And instead of just the flavum, can we be able to take those areas that come from the facet, that come from arthritis, that come from the disc, those areas that have a shift? And can we put a spacer to be able to improve those areas, both centrally as well as laterally, as well as if we need to, let's do a non-invasive fusion that can be removed if we had to. All of these are four different options that give patients better outcomes, better results, less problems, and in essence, options for knowing how to be able to punch pain in the face and get back to leading a life you deserve. If these are things that you find interesting, please leave us a comment and perhaps a like. If you wanna learn more about things like this, hit the subscribe button so that way you can be able to know what your options are and how you can be able to lead your life the way that you deserve. Thank you so much and have a great day.